What's up everybody, True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the what's next on Erickson Lubin, the former uh, world title challenger at 154 pounds, following his return to the act to action and TKO victory over uh, Luis Arias on, I believe he fought on June 24th on Showtime. Um, it was, it took place only one or two pounds above the 154 pound limit. Now, before we get into that, if you guys could smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I try to build my channel up here. Um, and if there's something you don't like, you could always give me a thumbs down, letting me know why. Now, back to this fight right here, or this fighter, Erickson Lubin. He was returning off of the fight of the year, but a brutal beating he took in the fight of the year from last year against um, Sebastian Fundora. Those are tough fights to bounce back from. And he looked sharp and crisp against Arias. He really broke him down and impressively uh, put him down. Uh, now Arias said, you know, that it was a bad stoppage. I think it was gonna lead to a knockout anyways because he was getting busted up by Lubin. Now originally I thought that Lubin was moving up to 160 and was gonna campaign there going forward. But Lubin said he'll fight anybody at once at 154 or 160, but the fact that he stayed close to 154 tells me that he's probably gonna return to 154. And I don't see any issues with that. I think that's a good thing. Erickson Lubin's always been strong, he's sharp, and he's, he's fast, and he's good. And there's a bigger crop to, to select from at 154 pounds. So, Let's see what possibly could be next for Lubin following this victory and go from there. We start with uh, number one, a rematch with Jermel Charlo. Remember they fought back, I believe in 2017. Charlo caught Lubin right on the chin in the first round, knocked him out. Um, there's no need for a rematch right now. Charlo's on the big level. He's the undisputed champ. He's fighting Canelo next, way up at 168. and. You know, Lubin's just not on his radar right now, and he shouldn't be. So, I don't see that one being possible. Then you got Tim Zhu, the WBO interim champion. Um, you know, I mean, if all else fails, Tim Zhu seems fearless. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be shocked if these two guys lock horns. I would like to see the fight. Personally, I think talent-wise, Erickson Lubin might be the most talented guy at 154. But, you know... Would Tim Zhu want that fight? I'm gonna lean towards the less likely because you'll probably have better options, but that's not to say the fight couldn't happen, so I do think it's a possibility. Then you got Brian Castaño, the former WBO champ. I would say it's a possibility because they're both PBC guys, but the fact that Castaño still hasn't fought since his uh, knockout loss to Charlo tells me that Castaño probably wouldn't come back and fight Lubin next. That's just, that's just my opinion. But again, they're both PBC guys, so it is possible. Then you got um, Brian Mendoza, the WBC interim champion. Now this one is a possibility if, especially if Mendoza's not fighting Sebastian Fundora next, Mendoza might say, fuck it, I'll fight Lubin. But then again, Mendoza might say, hey, I got a little pull here. I knocked out the guy that knocked out Lubin. Why do I need to fight him? And I think I lean a little bit more towards that way because these guys want to see how everything's going to shake out with Charlo and the belts before before they, you know, uh, before we get a decision on what's going to happen. So, you know, I think Mendoza, he could fight Fundora next or he could, he could just wait around and see what Charlo's going to do next. Then Sebastian Fundora, a rematch. Well, Fundora got knocked out against Mendoza. I don't think Fundora and Lubin too is in the cards right now. Lubin might not want it anyways. That was a tough fight. And remember, Fundora was dominating um, Mendoza before Mendoza caught him cold. So, you know, he's still a tough fighter. Even though I'd love to see the rematch, I don't think it's gonna happen next. Uh, then you got Magomed Kurbanov. Kurbanov is a highly rated guy in the WBA right now. Um, not sure he'd be rushing to the front of the line to fight a guy like Lubin. He's not a PBC guy. I'm gonna lean towards the less likely. Then he 
got Michel Soro. He's number five in the WBA. He just lost the razor thin decision to uh, Kurbanov. You know, Soro has Soro has never shied away from working with PBC guys. So I wouldn't uh, take it out of the realm of possibility that Soro and Lubin could happen. Um, you know, I think that's a possibility, especially with there's going to be certain guys that just don't want to fight either one of them. So maybe they could lock horns in like a, some kind of an eliminator to move up the ladder. Tony Harrison. Harrison's coming off that beatdown loss to Tim Zhu. I don't think he's going to want to rush in there and take on a guy like Lubin. You know, I wouldn't completely rule it out because Harrison's a hog and he's down for a challenge. But I don't think he's going to rush to the line to, to take him on. Too tough of a, of a style. And then finally, you got Danny Garcia rounding out everybody in the top 10 right now. You know, Danny is lined up to most likely fight Arizlandi Lara next at a catchweight of 155. I don't think he'd, he'd be interested in Lubin. So, Lubin, I believe he's staying at 154. I don't believe he's going to venture to 160. He could, though. That is a possibility um, just to move up the ladder. Like, I could see Lubin and Adamez fighting for the WBC middleweight title. But again, that whole situation's got to get cleared up with the other Charlo, Jamal. And Adamas has got to get upgraded to full champion. But if he stays at 154, there's not a lot of guys that are going to line up and sign the dotted line to, fa to face Lubin. But he could just go and try to move up the ladder himself and get into another eliminator and be right back in the mix. He really did do himself a service going to war with Sebastian Flandora. And I don't think he's too far off from a title shot in a big fight. So we'll see what happens. But that's it. That's what I got. That's my what's next on Erickson Lubin, the former world title challenger at 154 pounds super welterweight following his dominating TKO victory over Luis Arias back in June. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.